Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 368. That's 368 with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? You know, top of the morning to you. Feeling good. Feeling fine. Jumping on around. Got me nice house slippers on. Talking to you live and direct from an undisclosed location. Enjoying life. Living fast and free. If it's your first time watching this show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends. And to support the show, please support the show via Patreon. You can get full access to my entire library of over 300 podcasts, as well as this podcast in a full HD audio mode via Patreon only ahead of everyone else. So before it gets on iTunes, before it gets on Spotify, you can hear it first via Patreon. If you subscribe down below, patreon.com for slash Agostino. That's patreon.com for slash A G O S T I N H O. For little as $1 per month or £1.20 per month, you can get access to my entire library as well as this full audio podcast ahead of time before anybody else who doesn't like their stuff exclusive, who doesn't like their stuff now in the moment, no waiting around that's you so make sure you support the podcast via patreon anyway 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 how are you guys doing how are you guys feeling oh man it's been a mad one in it um england what i'm talking to you when england won um observations england beating iceland by the skin of their teeth last minute penalty um pretty boring game iceland didn't really come out to play which you, you can't really blame them for right facing a you know a storied or well-known team such as England with all the experience that we have and you know seeing as what Iceland have what maybe a hundred thousand players to pick from right um they did pretty a, a pretty good job I think we gave them the respect they kind of deserved in terms of um playing and um sort of making sure that we kept the kept our defense tight and all that good stuff but for the most part sweet um, iceland so just defending with like 10 men behind the ball hardly even attacking um goodmanson who was meant to be their kind of you know creative flair kind of kid who was meant to unlock the defense was kind of running around chasing shadows and by the time he did get on the ball he was kind of knackered so they didn't really have much of a threat on goal really apart from a few occasions so it really was one-way traffic but um by and large a pretty boring game pretty disappointing in terms of england's inability to stretch and pull teams move them around the field sort of find openings and clever little triangles and stuff it didn't really happen i think by the end of the game um iceland just tired from running around chasing shadows so that's when the penalty situation sort of arose and you know england sort of go over because england ended up giving a penalty down the other side right but you know iceland missed so that kind of saved england's teeth but by and large the takeaway from it is i don't really see a difference in england defending with harry Maguire, especially considering how slow he is so you know you wouldn't necessarily it's not that much of a drop in quality having eric dyer play center back um ward prowse although he's a great performer at the premier league probably do you need a ward prowse playing starting a game against iceland probably not <coughs> do you even need someone like Declan rice starting or or maybe you could if you could you could argue that hey england should play free at the back against the weaker teams right and then maybe have Declan playing in front of that three and then deputizing slotting in if the covers needed but you don't really need a four at the back and a defensive midfielder um another observation jack Grealish has to get into the england squad it's, in, it's insane how he can't get into the england squad considering the stuff that we saw from that team and it just doesn't make any sense but hey what do i know apart from that what else has been going on not that much really in it in culture and all that stuff in it right we have we've seen the, that report about trump supposedly disparaging the troops which you know is kind of par of course for that guy we shouldn't really be surprised that he would say something a bit degrading about the troops i don't think that should be uh that shocking of a statement um but it hasn't really made it hasn't really caused any sort of backlash really in it have you ever have you heard anything regarding that has it been something and again i think maybe people are, 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 are trained now to expect the least from him so i guess when these news when this news sort of comes out of the blue or sort of leaks you're not that surprised and it's not something you really take that seriously which is good i think i think going forward we need a bit of that right we need especially in youtube it feels like because I, I think everyone's reacting now to that tana mongo video of her apologizing quote unquote for all her stupid remarks over the years or some of her maybe racially insensitive stuff and a bit of the bullying stuff that she was accused of blah 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 um and people are not happy with her reply it's not good enough blah, whatever it may be but it's like i don't know what else you want from these people man do you know what i mean like 
Um, we shouldn't be shocked and surprised when she makes another mistake later on down the line because she will. That's just who she is as a person. The platform itself, YouTube, doesn't really... I don't know. I get the feeling that if you, if you build up a fan base on YouTube, especially if you're a YouTuber that does all the cut, jump cuts and you do loads of crazy vlogs, it's really impossible for you to like turn off your fan base unless you just completely deviate and go the other way and stop producing the content that they've kind of fell in love with you for. Her case in point, H3H3, Emma Chamberlain went through a little bit of it in her kind of transition as she was kind of, you know, maturing as a young woman. She kind of lost a few of her fans because I guess, you know, she she couldn't be the quirky broke girl anymore because she wasn't, right? She's a multi-millionaire, um, successful YouTuber. So it was kind of hard for people to kind of, you know, um, except that she's growing up but i think the best example has to be h3h3 right like you know they went from making those cool videos that everyone sort of like loved that were really on the button and really kind of spoke um was really kind of a cultural zeitgeist moment right they, they had a really um effective way of somehow distilling really serious topics into some slapstick improv often disgusting comedy and then suddenly when they changed and started doing podcasts and started talking about serious topics such as politics especially the way Ethan talks it didn't really sit right with the fan base and people just completely turned off of it but I think there's enough time enough water's gone under the bridge now where you kind of should have built up an idea of what Ethan is like as a person now you don't know what how anybody is like right you don't even know what I'm really about because I only present what I present to you in front of the camera but you would hope um, based on the topics I speak about based on how I carry myself that you kind of gain an understanding of what I'm like as a person and I'm assuming the same thing will be some same same could be said for an Ethan Klein for Tana Mongo. Um Donald Trump is a good example. I'm just speaking about that. But we have to get to a point, I think, in my opinion, there needs to be less outrage so that we can reserve our outrage and annoyance for matters that really require a hundred percent of a freak out, hundred percent anger, hundred percent, you know, just throwing our toys out of the pram, kicking shit. We need to reserve um, our energy for those situations um, getting annoyed because Trisha Paytas said another dumb and insane thing isn't gonna really isn't good for you isn't good for society it's not good for the person because she's got her fan base they're not gonna you know they're, they're, they've accepted what she's like as a person and they're willing to support her for that and I think the same goes for Tana Mungo, the same goes for Trump all these people so when you see them acting a fool or doing something that you don't really agree with just turn the other cheek or you know switch the channel open a new tab and just keep it moving really um especially if you're not a fan it doesn't really it doesn't really benefit you in any kind of way to get torn up about it because you know you're not a fan other people are and it is what it is it's a free society we live in people are free to choose who they want to follow and who they want to back and if it's someone that you think is morally bankrupt so be in it i think that's just what life is um especially i don't know maybe a lot of these people haven't actually worked real jobs like especially service jobs working in shops and bars and pubs and restaurants you cross paths with so many people who you just wouldn't even you know piss on if they're on fire right that it sort of kind of builds up a resilience to dickheads really in that respect i think that's a good example like you, you're able to pop a lot more because you've done it for the best part of five to ten years right working bouncing around from bar to bar restaurant to restaurant shop to shop you've met some incredibly bizarre characters but you know what you're getting paid it's allowing you to you know buy your trainers it's allowing you to um you know travel the world to take your your partner out for dinner um give your parents a little gift right it's, it's providing something for your lifestyle so you just end up kind of you know compartmentalizing people's per personalities or just good, putting a good front on it putting a good face on it and people don't do that too often now i think there's people that are too um concerned about somehow especially on the internet like you can't create us you you can and you can't i guess in some respect because some things always come across my timeline or my explore page that i don't want to know about but they do i don't get angry it's just what it is i just keep it scrolling um it's really difficult to create a safe space on the internet it's almost impossible really in that respect all right um even if you had like a closed behind the door um community maybe the only way to do it is to do like a paywall forum or like a private discord or something but even then you're going to get a couple of detractors in there just wanting to like stir shit up for the sake of it um your best just you know knowing that that's possible knowing that could possibly happen and then just being you know what inoculate to it because you're in your safe space with your people and if someone else comes along and says something stupid you just keep it moving but i don't know man seeing somebody outraged with the tana mongo thing is really odd the, the girl keeps showing you who she is as the person you keep expecting something different either you like her for who she is or you don't that's my opinion anyway that's what i think about it um again oh, of course it's not excusing what she said to that girl allegedly um 
she made her feel you know small and you know a lot of bullying uh, a lot of uh, it, it kind of sounds like there might be some racial undertones or overtones to it don't get me wrong but a lot of it just sounds like a lot of that kind of um i'm above you i'm better than you because i have more subscribers money la sort of douchebaggery that people do out there because i've been there before um i know a few people who have lived there at the moment um who are navigating that scene and it can be you know for all its good parts it also can be a very vapid and empty arena for people who don't really have much to say for themselves you're using it as a platform to kind of you know put down others right in an effort to kind of boost their own level so it can be that place so most of that stuff did sound like that but again it's not something you know you can condone in any kind of way but do you expect any better from this person do you expect them to be like a I don't know. Were you, were you really surprised when you heard that story regarding Tana Mungo and that friend? I forgot her name. Don't get me wrong. That YouTuber. Sorry for not mentioning you, but were you really surprised? I wasn't. Uh, it's par of course, isn't it? Um, it's all like Nico Avocado. Nico Nico Avocado. Is that his name right? Doing another disgusting video, right? Or him bawling his eyes out about him being too big and you know whatever sort of drama queen issue he's going through. Like, is that a surprise anymore? It shouldn't be, man there's enough time has passed on youtube for you to kind of gain understanding on who you're following and what they're about and if you're not then it really is your fault really in that regard i think in my in my opinion anyway but hey what do i know so um first thing to talk about is i wanted to um briefly speak about big sean's new album detroit 2 that i've listened to um no pun intended for the best part of what a week so far was that weekend something a week it's been yeah just a weekend fucking hell the days go by so quickly but yeah um pretty decent album to be fair um all just to get out of the way i've never really been the biggest big sean fan i don't mind him on features and stuff but as an album i've always found his voice to be really whiny um and just odd right i'm not really a fan of I, I'm, I'm a big i'm a stickler on like following rappers I'm a big stickler. Yeah, one of my criteria for enjoying a rapper's music or just music in general is the voice and the tone of the artist um, or even just the texture of what they sort of produce. Um, it can turn me on or off. And Big Sean just unfortunately has that voice, um, that tonality that just really grates me. It's sort of like, you know, um, what, um, fingernails on a chalkboard just as of my vibe. And I guess part of the reason is because the other side of it too it's like you know he doesn't necessarily in my opinion make great albums right he tends to make great singles with great even some of his songs have got great parts in it you might like the first verse and the chorus but then the you know the outro the bridge is a bit odd it just seems to be a little bit clunky in terms of his um overall song making ability which is a disappointing because technically as a writer right and he's you know reading his raps and stuff right he's a very proficient at rapping right he's absolutely one of the people that you would you'd kind of put in a conversation with a uh, drake a kendrick, a kendrick lamar j cole he's up there in terms of lyricism right you, you can't deny that but when it just comes to him just speaking and you hearing his tone and how he kind of sounds on certain records it just it just not my vibe whatsoever but he has improved over the last few years it felt like he's kind of taken a bit of reflection i think due to some of his other albums being really not critically received well um which is a disappointing too because he has you know looking at his at this as well on wikipedia like you know he's got good music and def jam he has all the co-signs in the industry um everybody seems to like him he seems to be a pretty decent dude he's given every key every access to some of the best producers and rooms and studios all around the all, all across all across the world basically or maybe across america and he just always comes up short when it comes to the music and it must be really frustrating for him especially being signed to good music and def jam records right that's essentially you know um that's essentially like you know you've basically made it right when you've got those two labels as your cosigns right good music of course being um founded by uh kanye west and then you've got def jam with the whole do you, you got def jam like an industry stalwart of a brand right so you would you'd imagine you'd imagine this would be a great platform to make great music but unfortunately it just isn't the case for him but don't get me wrong this is probably my favorite big sean project overall front to back i still think it lacks cohesion i still think there's probably some tracks on there that could have been you know uh, omitted but i do understand that he was desperate to give his fans more music because they've not heard from him for a while so you want to just stack the album full of tunes and i actually much prefer artists that do it this way than the whole deluxe thing at the moment i'm getting really bored of it especially because some of the deluxe aren't deluxes right it's just two extra tracks or bonus tracks um G gashi did it recently who i'm a big fan of 
but he put out a really good album, I think 1984, and the deluxe track album now has only two extra tracks on it. So it's like, what's the point of reshooting, not reshooting, but re-uploading an entire album to Spotify just to add two more tracks? I get it. You want to add to the streams, but it's not necessary. So I'd much prefer an artist coming out with a 26, 24 um, track album on the back, just straight out of the blue, than actually giving me a deluxe album, or maybe breaking it up into two and actually having them be thematically two different projects that you can maybe, you know, um that you can maybe release over a set period of time um so going through the track list some of my favorite tracks on the album i would say a standout would obviously be a deep reverence reaching um nipsey hustle r.i.p um a real shame that that guy is not here no more man hearing his tonality hearing the way he raps and he comes in hitting on records is just amazing he has this really weird cadence when he raps that's sort of melodic without even being melodic in a weird way if you give mind if you get what i mean um just and especially on those kind of boom bap it's sort of like you know um grimy uh, west coast beats you know something that hip boy is sort of synonymous with oh again hip boys um uh thing so not all the tracks are produced by hip boy but i'm assuming he was actually producing it i assumed because it just feels a lot more like a smooth one to whatever how many tracks one to 21 project it just feels a lot tighter than other big sean projects he's put out and i'm assuming that's because he has one person sort of like overseeing it and um this is kind of something i hope he does going forward um because i think this is probably bring the best out of him i think big sean does need an executive producer or a producer to basically sit down and craft and you know um tying up the project as good as he is at rapping i just don't think he has the ability to do that in that regard which is you know it's not it's not a slight because i think there's not a lot of artists out there that can rap as well as him um uh, and be able to kind of you know produce or sequence an album well so it is a rare trait to have but regardless um the other track i enjoyed a lot was obviously walls with post malone's a really good track but the standout one for me that i've been playing um again and again and again is number five body language featuring ty dollar sign and jenny aiko like god almighty first of all ty dollar signs runs and harmonies in the background like just sensational i really do hope like we've got this from Ty Dolla Sign, we've got that track Expensive, a few other features he's been on. I'm hoping that the album that's due to come out is really good because Ty Dolla Sign has a real tendency of only dropping really solid projects, right? Um, so really solid um, mixtapes, but then his albums can be a bit lackluster. I'm really hoping whoever's in his camp is taking the time this needed to actually put together a solid album, right? He deserves it. His talent deserves a classic album and he doesn't have that at the moment, but Ty Dolla Sign features are just sensational and genial eco man god damn it man um maybe it's just me and because you know you see them plus all over social media but the chemistry when they're both on the same track is just palpable you know you can really really feel it and um, hopefully we get another what is it um as much as i look at at the time i didn't really enjoy it but what's the day what's their kind of collaborative project they do is it 28 19 or whatever it is whatever they did their kind of collaborative r&b-ish hip-hop but they do i didn't really like it at first but i really listened to it i think maybe a week ago before the album came out and it's pretty good listen it's got a lot of replay value um so i'm hoping they do a lot more work together going forward i assume they will do anyway but actually project together will be great um the story time by dave Chappelle was really funny right adoro adamara that was awesome that talking taking a piss out of um what's his face um and what else um ztfo send the fuck out was a pretty fun track as well of course respect it found it good i'm not really i don't know how i feel about hearing big sean and young fog but you know i respect the hustle um guard your heart anderson pack and um early mac and wale that was a really nice one wale featured on there really well i think he that was a standout verse from him Again, you don't really get crappy Wale versus, in my opinion, that's it, 2888, that's their debut project. And I mean, their joint project. And then, of course, the Friday Night Cypher was sensational. A lot of, um, you know, um, Sada Baby, you know, who I'm a big fan of. I've been banging out his his stuff when I go to the gym. Um, Cash Doll really smashed it as well. 42 Doug, not really his best verse. Obviously, Eminem towards the end was really amazing. But yeah, overall, a, a pretty decent um album. I think probably my favorite from big sean easily um of the last few years again i'm not really a biggest big sean fan but again i'm hoping to see he gets good numbers with this because you know he's but he's going through a lot of stuff personally it feels like so it'll be quite nice to you know end the year with a solid album and you know some good critical acclaim and some good first week numbers because unfortunately he's that guy in it he's signed to two big labels he's a bit industry he needs the numbers to justify the amount of money that probably is put into this sort of album right with the features and the videos coming up and stuff you know he just can't get away with because that was 
was remember the beef that he Tyler kind of had with um Big Sean what kind of when he kind of outsold him and, and all this sort of stuff it was more so a kind of an indictment of like see just because you've got industry access and you've got all the links doesn't mean you're going to actually produce a good album right he's about I'm about the music you're about the kind of star sh- the star you know the Hollywood industry side of things so hopefully Big Sean gets a good um, return on this and you know it goes out well so that he can kind of build from this because I think you know a happy Big Sean probably is a better Big Sean in terms of musical output in my opinion but hey what do I know next on the list we have interesting news regarding uh, one Travis Scott he's got a mcdonald's collaboration which is bizarre in my opinion i don't really know what the deal is with that one um it was announced i guess a couple of days ago um that travis scott is collaborating with um mcdonald's no details actually came as what the deal was but you know sooner rather than later people got people kind of assumed it'd be some sort of you know um custom meal that you put together in the same shape that migos did with uh, popeyes back in the day oh no maybe a few years ago was it a year ago maybe maybe it was a year ago when the chicken burger came out they did they did a little thing um odd one i guess in terms of travis travis is probably a weird rapper in that regard where he's probably the only one of his kind of age group or class that's extremely marketable right he's very brand friendly because he hardly speaks um so there's there's uh he's unlikely to cancel himself obviously he's got the kanye connection um he's also got the weekend connection he's also just got the kids connection right he's got the youth in his hands for the most part seeing him perform at o2 kind of gave me that um realization of just how big of a fan base someone like travis scott has like when you go see someone play at o2 i saw future play there packed out the arena you see travis scott play they packed it out um drake play they packed it out and you see the people that you know you're around and you're like wow this is what a fan base looks like because i'd imagine a lot of the bigger acts especially in the u.s they could easily sell out you know five thousand place arenas right quite simply but traveling abroad to a place like england and selling out the o2 uh, multiple dates and having a really diverse fan base really shows your star quality and your kind of uh, pull, f- pull a, you know yeah you're poor in terms of being able to put bums in seats so if you're a brand like mcdonald's and you kind of want to give yourself a bit of a pep especially during covid maybe people have you know i don't know stop eating um, burgers and chips because they want to get healthy or you're just seeing a drop in sales and you just want to remind people that you're still alive the best place to do it is to kind of link up with somebody like a travis scott now the only issue i have with it is that you know he's a pretty slim skinny dude i don't really see him kind of i don't know he's what he's what's he known for eating like dunkin donuts i'm not too sure i don't follow him that much on social but i don't get the impression that he's a mcdonald's guy through and through maybe he is because he smokes a lot so that could be a thing where right? you get the munchies you go out and get mcdonald's but he just doesn't strike me as somebody that would make sense to have a mcdonald's documentary uh sorry collaboration merely based on how how he carries himself now again i don't know maybe on his socials you could just you know be always posting mcdonald's and i'm completely out the blue off the kind of cuff here but from my impression of travis i don't get the idea that he's a solid or he's like a you know a mcdonald's aficionado right if this was fucking dj academics or something right or i don't know somebody else a little bit more rotund this will make more sense or just somebody that you always saw you know even kanye right this will make more sense than a travis scott because you've seen that legendary picture of kanye get mcdonald's and his lamborghini right or just rapping about it in general mentioning it a few times here and there but hey maybe you know maybe they did try to reach out to a kanye and he just kind of rejected the advances but i don't really see the point in it but I, you know what do i know and then somebody I guess here uh, broke down the ingredients that go into the Travis Scott um, burger. Inst- we have here a couple of cheese slices um, on the other s- on either side of a burger patty, which is interesting. Um, that you get the yeah, it's interesting that you get the slice of cheese on the top of the burger buns. That means that the top of the oh no, it's actually the wrong way around. What am I talking about? the hill is a bottom bit right so yeah because i was gonna say it's really strange that you'd get the cheese to be at the top it really should be at the bottom but anyway i digress three ships of bacon shredded lettuce uh pickles onions tomato and then mustard um so what just a a bacon cheeseburger it seems like right with shredded with basically pickles are included because i don't think you get lettuce no you do get do you get lettuce in a cheese in a bacon cheeseburger you don't do you so maybe the lettuce the lettuce um and the pickles and the good is a kind of added addition and it's travis scott burger so i'm assuming that's the card that they give the staff members when they're putting the good burgers together there in uh bloody mcdonald's but again i don't know man weird one again i get it because he's brand friendly but strange collaboration and maybe another indication as to another example as 
to why some artists shouldn't just take collaborations for the sake of it. I know they're going to pay, but sometimes it does oddly enough cheapen your brand in the long term that you just, you know, would rock. But I guess McDonald's isn't some any brand in it. It's an American institution. It's a world institution. So maybe that has sense, but I don't know. I don't necessarily think it's a good idea. I think for something like a Travis, it kind of cheapens his brand somewhat. This is just my, my, my opinion. Again, I'm a fan of McDonald's. I eat the fuck out of it. I don't mind it. But I just think for somebody like a Travis Scott, should you really be kind of lending your name to a McDonald's? It's, doesn't it, you know, I guess it's just, it doesn't really matter because it's, you know, it doesn't look like the box is even branded. It's just a Travis Scott burger that's put on the menu. Maybe it's just a bit of fun. It's not that big of a deal. Unfortunately, it's only going to be available in the States, not in the UK. But, you know, I can't ever imagine myself rocking up to McDonald's purposely going to order a, a fucking Travis Scott burger so I can eat it on YouTube and do an unboxing. That's that, that that's a major R word, isn't it? So not really something that I'm down with in that regards. But hey, what do I know? What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Do you think it's corny? Would you get it if you were able to get it let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are okay next on the list um we have an example as to why potentially why some people aren't fans of one brendan shaw who i've mentioned on this podcast a few times if you're familiar with it um brendan of course is you know one of the hosts of the fire and the kid which has now been changed to a, a, a talk show what is it comedy podcast with him as a main guest and then a revolving um door of co-hosts which is now you know just essentially been built down to just wolf because no one knows in la wants to be anywhere near brendan because he's got covid from what he said anyway based on his podcast with Bert crash i'm not throwing name dirt in his name but you know um pretty popular podcast he does his thing but unfortunately over the last few years his popularity has sort of waned with his fan base it seems like right of course there's some detractors some haters i'm just you know gonna always pick apart what he does but it seems like for the most part a lot of the fan base have kind of reacted negatively to the evolution of brendan shaw which is maybe similar to the tana mongo emma chamberlain thing that i mentioned before i don't really think it's the same but it might be because i did I, I do remember when it first started especially when it during the fox era i think that might have been when i kind of jumped on board because yeah they did they were on fox for a while um it was a fun show right fun show brendan shaw the fire and the kid Brendan's a fighter, ex MMA guy, or at the time he was still fighting in the UFC, doing it alongside Brian Kellen, a stand up comedian, very experienced um, part of the LA scene, best friend to Joe Rogan, even though Joe Rogan won't mention his name again since he's been convicted of this, you know, or since he's been um, accused of sexual assault and whatever it may be but i digress really fun podcast and then i don't know what happened over time maybe they just became rich off of it they just got lazy um they started to hate their own fan base or maybe the actual turning point if you think about it, it might have been that ama they did do you remember that um ask me anything on reddit that was an absolute shit show and i think that was maybe an insight for them into what their fan base actually thinks of them because i don't think they actually knew they had no idea legit, legit, legit. Melina Brennan always says, I don't want really comments and you never believe it. I think they generally didn't have any idea, clue that there was a small community of people, fan base that kind of thought, you know, Brenda was a bit of a, you know, whatever he is and uh, he wasn't letting Brian shine. It's funny because people said they weren't, let, you know, people said at the time, Brenda was sort of holding, not holding back, but Brenda was sort of like, you know, um, bullying brian on the show not letting him finish sentences which is true not letting him finish his stories which is true and just essentially kind of you know um treating him a bit like an employee which is true as well but now that they've both they've each got their own show brian, brian callen has had his show behind a paywall right um what's that the kind of report that's you know people haven't necessarily reacted that well to and you've seen kind of seen his um in deficiencies or sort of kind of his shortcomings and his personality and then you've seen brian brian on the other side sorry brendan on the other side with josh wolf you've also seen how he can be on his own you've kind of i've hoped people have come to a realization that they're actually better off together as toxic not toxic as as annoying as they can be together they're be they're far better off under the banner of firing a kid than they are on their own sort of like you know platforms or their own shows um especially if you've seen the recent clips of brian kellen you know essentially talking without a microphone screaming about racial injustice and affirmative action and stuff you're like god almighty man how the mighty have fallen but yeah this clip is a good example as to why maybe brennan isn't liked by the some of the fan base um it's him basically um you know uh 
ranting about e-bikes um he just recently got into bmxing i uh, sorry mountain biking and he's obviously launched his thick boy bike club merch stuff that he does um which is aimed at i guess bigger dudes who like to cycle which i didn't even think that was a thing to be in a group because i think bikes you know everyone rides bikes it does not really bad big or small but hey he always he's really good at this guy kind, of, kind of getting a niche um you know riding the fuck out of it you know no pun intended and sort of making merch to sort of profit off it as well and his fans seem to like it so you know i got no problem with that but I guess the mountain bike thing is funny because it's an it's a sort of like an encapsulation representative of just, you know, sometimes I don't know what it is, is it lack of research or just lack of kind of wanting to get in, you know, because I when it's with me and I get into things, you know, you want to research what you're getting into, maybe find a community online, maybe read some articles, watch some videos, you know, pick up the lingo, whatever it may be, right? And then sort of just kind of abide by it and kind of, you know, slowly but surely build up on your knowledge base as you go through so here's is him ranting about e-bikes having no knowledge of mountain biking prior to this anyway he reads a couple of comments from fans saying e-bikes are you know gay and that you shouldn't ride them he sort of rants about it and kind of agrees and then it's intercut with pictures or videos of him actually you know scurrying down the hill on an e-bike as it whistles by him you know it's just like why would you go out of your way to just to be so disparaging about e-bikes, not even knowing anything about the biking community or mountain bike community in the first place? And then um, that further down the line, decide to get yourself an e-bike, right? Or, you know, get given a free one by Specialized, um, which is good. Don't get me wrong. Do your thing. And then now kind of, you you know, turn back around and say, oh, yeah, you know, e-bikes, there's nothing wrong with them. Blah, 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 blah. It's like <sighs> bizarre human being, man. Very, very bizarre. But again, another another. In, uh, interpretation as to why he maybe isn't the most liked guy on the platform at the moment the bike you're basically on a motorcycle you get a motorcycle dude you're not gonna work out and you're not sweating dude i <laughs> see these boys on the e-bikes just i mean they they all look like armadillos and spandex they look like <laughs> shit and they just fly by me on these e-bikes and it's frustrating man because they you know they're basically on fucking electric motorcycles just going right up the mountain yeah and I post about them, like, got all these e-bikes past me. And real mountain bike people are like, those, are, those aren't cool, man. Those are weak. Those are frowned upon in the community of mountain biking. And, and, they're, not, and they're not cool. Um, I've, I've cycled, what, for the, most of my life, especially to work back and forth and, you know, fixed gears, 26-inch uh, BMXs and all that stuff. The only people in my area that ride e-bikes are Deliveroo and Uber Eats drivers. That's it, right? And they have every reason to, right? You know, jumping around, going to point A to point B, it probably helps if you're trying to get as much money as you can out of these um, delivery companies to ride an e-bike. But going to work and then having an e-bike zip past you, especially the the absolute wankers who cycle really, act like they're cycling, but they're not. They're just, you know, they essentially got their their um, hand on the throttle or pressing the button and just speeding across, but they pretend to pretend like they're cycling and they're literally speeding past you it's bad enough when you're in a fixed gear fixed fixed bike and somebody on the 12 speed you know racing bike comes by you and they're just sort of like clicking through the gears and just kind of laying you right outstripping you every kind of every kind of two pedals that you do is six or seven to theirs it's even worse with e-bikes so the e-bike thing is odd i don't really get it maybe it's an american thing going on trails on an e-bike seems very bizarre and um, part of the fun of going on a trail on a mountain bike suspension bike is sweating your ass off trying to get uphill maneuvering down here on a bike using your brakes using your pedals balancing pivoting off of stuff like you know that's part of the joy of riding in hills and we don't even have that many hills here in the uk right but whenever i, I was doing that back in the day going you know in some of the marshes and stuff and hanging out in some of the parks and you know running or going through some of the back you know the back roads that you have in parks and stuff that's sort of like laid out for bikes and whatever that regard that's part of the fun you wouldn't want to just be speeding up and down it like with no effort on a bike and again part of the reason of getting a bike in my opinion is the say is the kind of the health benefits right of cycling actually cycling right on the actual pedal bike so getting an e-bike makes no sense in that regard honestly unless you're an uber eats delivery driver why do you have one it isn't cool and again i'm not that plugged into the community but i know just from riding bikes myself that that is the case and I wouldn't kind of suddenly change my mind because Specialized decided to. Because if I had a prior branch of Specialized, I'd just get a really nice bike, right? Get them to custom make a really nice bike for you, maybe adjust the seat to maybe accommodate um, you being a bigger dude and get bigger pedals, maybe room a bus, and you could essentially sell that as a thick boy bike, innit? Because, you know, it's essentially been customized to your liking. But an e bike, it's like. The reason why people frown on e bikes, because, you and he's right, 
for the most part that I've seen. See, look, he's changing his mind already because <laughs> he doesn't. It's too hard. <laughs> um, on the trails is most of the e-bike people. Their cardio sucks. They just rely on the bike to get them up the hills, and then they want to go down. So you're not. I guess you're not. It's kind of the cheap way to go as far as like you're not earning the the down. Earning the down is that even a phrase? Earning the down. Is that a thing with my command by people? I don't even know if that's a thing. If it is, I would never use it. It sounds absolutely R-worded. Um, but hey, man, interesting dude, isn't it? Again, I, uh, it's all good changing your mind about stuff and, you know, having a, you know, whatever change of perspective because you're suddenly doing the activity. But to rail on e-bikes so hard when you have no experience riding them, you're just going off what someone says and you don't want to seem uncool and in purpose you get in one just so you can be like, hey, I'm counterculture. It's just so odd. He does that quite often, isn't it? It's just a bizarre thing to do. But again, I guess he's sort of leaning into this sort of um, internet, not villain, but, you know, Chad, douche, whatever it is. Right? He's leaning into it a lot, but interesting way to go about things. So again, um, big up Brendan regardless. Go buy your Thick Boy merch if you're into that kind of stuff and keep it moving, innit? I guess. Then next on the list, we have a pretty interesting, not in, no, I wouldn't say interesting, but a pretty funny video regarding um, Cal and everyone sort of taking the piss off of. I've got this video to fire on the kids subreddit, so big up the homeless cats over there for uploading this. But I guess this is a video taken from a clip taken from a Brian Callen show that's behind the paywall on Patreon. So make sure you definitely go and support that. I think it's the fire in the rinks. So I'll, if not, I'll link it down below. I think they've changed it now. I think it's something like conspiracy something. I forgot what it is, but I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes so you can definitely check out the Patreon. Make sure you go and support them on Patreon. But I'll play a little bit of the clip here. But um, it's just, I guess it's uh, sad, I guess, in terms of how the mighty I might have fallen. If, of course, what he's been accused of is true, then it's not sad whatsoever. But just to see what he sort of kind of reduced himself to based off the allegations, it's just, as a fan of the show, personally, as a fan of him, personally, more so, it's just sad to see, in it? And this is why I was saying in the beginning, a lot of people are like, oh, man, in the comments say he shouldn't hide because he's not, he, he, whatever he's been accused of isn't true. And he has to be, he's innocent to proven guilty in a court of law. Cool, cool, cool. All those things I've like, right? But unfortunately, in the world that we live in at the moment, you're not innocent until you, you're not innocent to prove guilty. You're guilty until, until prove innocent. And even in that case, some people are still going to think you're guilty. Look at bloody OJ Simpson, right? Not a good example. Don't get me wrong because he probably definitely did it. <coughs> but, you know, people still, say he basically murdered his wife which he probably ended up doing and doing but regardless in this society especially if you've been accused of sexual assault especially in a me too era you can't believe that you're innocent until proven guilty you have to kind of believe that you're probably guilty until proven innocent and you have to go out of your way to prove your innocence justin bieber style and unfortunately for brian callan being the age that he is and you know and you know with the allegations being more than 20 years ago this is really impossible for him to have any mount any defense similar to what justin bieber did right because justin bieber's you know essentially been brought up in a smartphone or you know um era or social media era so he's able to pull up the receipts you know triangulate some locations and stuff and essentially disprove allegations pretty quickly but if you're brian Cannon, it's pretty hard to say you did or you did not <laughs> rape or sexual assault somebody back in the 90s right especially you know if you were under the influence of uh, substances or it's just a long time ago of course you would imagine if you actually did do something like that you would remember it it's uh, pretty difficult for somebody to misremember something like that of such a traumatic experience or occasion but regardless of the fact i still thought at the time and i still maintain now it was probably a better idea for him to kind of disappear in the shadows mount a defense in private whether it was legal or via the pr agency or press wise and then kind of go about it that way this con standing in front of the camera pretending everything's all right thing and saying that he's standing up to counterculture stuff is really odd and bizarre unless he really believes and his team really believe deep down that these women are gonna suddenly retract their statements because that's the only way this is gonna work right if they retract their statements and unequivocally come out and say hey we made this up because we wanted to get money and extort this guy anything other than that is not gonna exonerate him so um going in front of camera and speaking about you know topics that you know societal topics and politics and stuff and lending your opinion on certain things just 
not the right way to go about things, especially when he's a comedian. Most, you know, essentially most of his fans come to him for that silly goose comedy that he provides on various podcasts. But because he is under inve- no investigation, well, because he's got this cloud over his head, no one's going to want him have on have him on his show, as proved with the fire and the kid. Cast media said, nope, you can't go in there. Even his best friend Joe Rogan hasn't mentioned his name since the allegations arose, and he would never probably appear on the Joe Rogan show now since he's moved to Texas. So, um, it's by and large, it's kind of a shitty situation for all people involved but this clip from his show on uh patreon is very um bizarre just in the fact that of how you know his eyes move and the fact that he stares into the camera incessantly and has all these weird right-wing talking points which is the i guess a standard grift that you do once you get accused or something because i guess it's the only place where people are willing to give people the benefit of doubt or allow you to basically speak or that's the only place that you are you, you're basically deemed innocent until proven guilty i think in a right-wing kind of community so that kind of makes sense but let's play a bit of it now so you can hear what he's kind of doing at the moment take the fact that our democracy no matter what happens What's it? Uh, okay, this is, yeah. What are you talking about here? Uh, <laughs> up, and I wanted to dilate an interesting question that Barack Obama asked at the Democratic National Convention. I think it's an important one. Because I think sometimes there's so much information and we don't know what to focus on. But he asked a very important question. Is our democracy at stake? Is our American democracy at stake? That is a very... <laughs> I think that's all. That, it's like his eyes are not moving anymore. It's like, oh, Brian, man, what are you doing, brother? Like, honestly, it's sad to see him go out this way. It, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but he's essentially kind of slowly it's not it's not owen benjamin but it's owen benjamin-esque in it right i know in benjamin at least with him he basically decided to leave hollywood right he wasn't necessarily kicked out well you could say maybe some could argue he was kicked out based on what he said about the jews and all these sort of other wild shit that he came out with but he, i think he made a concert decision to sort of burn the boats right um he kind of lives out in the wilderness with his wife and his children his dogs and his farm right he's living life and doing his thing so at least that you can't really even though i think a lot of the la government because all the LA comic guys when they were kind of ragging on owen benjamin i never got it because it seemed like somebody that purposely went out of their way to rub people up the wrong way say the thing that wasn't the most popular you know dive into conspiracy theories um and just kind of question everything and that's always going to alienate you especially in the la comedy scene because everyone kind of pretends like they're you know far smarter than what they actually are but i think you know the ability to kind of like stand on your own and do your own thing and sort of like cultivate your own fan base that doesn't kind of require a joe rogan stamp is probably a lot more admirable than what some of these guys do right essentially just following joe wherever he's going especially the ones that are moving to with him to texas so looking back at it now especially some of the detractors some especially some of the industry people that were saying oh Lauren Benjamin has lost his mind. Looking back on it now, has he actually lost his mind though, or have the or has the scene lost his mind? Right, the, the inability to sort of stick together and sort of like help out their friends during a real time of need, right? What which Crystal Lee and Brian kind of are kind of going for the idea that they all kind of threw each other under the bus and remained silent and kind of you know um purposely kind of you know lied about their friendship with this person and said hey i didn't really know him all this sort of stuff like who's the who's the, who's the person that lost their mind someone that kind of disowns their friend after allegations or somebody that kind of purposely burns the boats and moves out into the wilderness so that they can kind of get away from this hollywood machine and i think maybe owen benjamin was right so if i say brian Cannon's going to owen benjamin route that's not a derogatory statement it's more so the idea that he's kind of now decided his eyes have been open and he's been red pilled and now suddenly he's going to start railing on the establishment or whatever it may be but that's not true you know the moment these allegations go away or somehow they get proven to be false he's going to step right back into the hollywood sphere he's going to pick up his agents he's going to go on rehearsals again he's going to still be in that kind of loop he's not going to ever stop because he's upset not obsessed but that's basically he's been his career for the best part of what 30 plus years to suddenly now turn into this kind of guy that stands on his own morals and has a particular unpop- unpopular opinion about the viewing world is not accurate. I don't think so. Dramatic question. If I was a young person, I'd be a little panicked. I mean, I think most of us... But the eyes, our democracy, the lack of a microphone is No matter odd. what happens, I'll always be able to speak my mind. Sort of. We're losing that. But you know what I mean. At least I get to vote. I get to criticize my leader. I get to, I get to decide who my leader is. If I don't like him, I can oust him. Sorry about oust. Nobody used the word oust anymore. It's funny though, because now that we know, looking back at it now, Brian, maybe Brendan had a point about... Um interrupting Brian so much because when he goes on and on about these sort of things you're like bruv man you're a stand-up comedian like let's just allow all the um pseudo-intellectual shit in it 
And it's also because I think at the time it was like, oh, that's a bit unfair. Why did remember back in there when Brian used to do the um, dropping knowledge segment of the show? And I used to think, oh, that's out of order. Why did Brendan tell him not to do that anymore, isn't it? And he'd kind of always roll his eyes or get or be on his phone. But now you know why because he, looking back on it, he rarely prepared ahead of time. He's always been reading something, like an article he says on his phone. He had to access through his email. It wasn't kind of just set up already there, ready to go. And he just, you know, would be messing up the facts and flabbering stuff and just kind of getting stuff horribly wrong. And they'd be inundated with hate, which they already kind of were getting a lot at the time anyway. So it made sense for Brian to be like, you know what, Brendan's like, hey, let's relax on the, let's relax on the dropping knowledge. Just, let's just shoot the shit and do the show. Just do what kind of pays the bills, being funny and acting like a silly goose. So seeing him do all this stuff is just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's fast forward a little bit of it. Has all the power. What makes a democracy, what's awesome about the way our constitution works is it decentralizes power. So everybody's got to fight with each other. <laughs> Things move slowly through the <laughs> Oh, mate, come on, man. You can't say he's not losing his mind, but this must be a bit of a mind fuck, man. Somebody that's so in love with the industry to suddenly be like on the outskirts of it. Because again, that's the same. Only Benjamin at least, at least chose or did stuff purposely to kind of get himself ousted. This is just like one day you're in, one day you're out, right? Especially when he especially when you think about the crying video. You're like, God almighty, now look at you. Now look. Checks ambitious people and ambitious groups. Cause they gotta fight other ambitious groups. But still, let's get back to the question. Is our American democracy at stake? When Obama asked that. The soul. The word soul is used by priests, wizards, and Satan, right? The soul of our nation, it's beautiful. He also said, I represent a bright future, not a dark future. Listen to this one. I will be an ally of the light, not the darkness. Okay. Now, this should be read as the, you should be on the top of a mountain in a robe with an English accent like this. I would be an ally. I guess the editing's good. That's one thing I can say about that. Whoever's helping out at the editing is doing a really good job. But um, yeah, man, side hat is going out for a minute. Again, you know, if he's guilty, he's guilty. But Jesus Christ, man. Like, this sort of like right wing grit thing that he's doing at the moment is just horrendous to see. Maybe it's always it's been who he's, he's been. Maybe it's an indication of what he's always been in the first place. But God almighty, man, what a way to go out in it. But yeah, let me know what you think, man. Is is this a right wing grift? Is just is this just the right way to defend yourself, or have I got it horribly wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on. Okay, what else we gonna talk about here? Oh, okay. So, serious topic time. Or ser serious? Yeah, ser yeah, probably a serious topic. I would assume all things considered. So, over the last week or last weekend, it feels like to me anyway, especially on techno Twitter, especially on DJ Twitter the whole community or if you're a community the scene has been in absolute disarray right especially off the back of the plague raves and the debate around that and some of the big name artists going you know some of the business techno lot been getting booked to play all these you know essentially risque parties in locations where covid rates were really high and spiked as soon as they left it just seemed like you know there is a lack of kind of cohe no there's a lack of um community a lack of understanding um, a lack of introspection, just a complete mess of a situation. And then coming off the back of that, we had the news that Eric Marillo was accused of sexual battery in Miami. And the details were quite foggy at the beginning, but we were kind of, I think the first story maybe came out in July, August. I'm not too sure when that first story sort of arose, but it sort of kind of came to um, head when he essentially handed himself in when kind of the rape kit was basically i think yeah the rape kit basically had his dna in it and then he kind of handed himself in and then he was released on bail and then unfortunately over the last what week or so um he passed away now of course we don't know what the cause of death is but it's safe to assume that more likely than not it was probably an overdose of some sort maybe brought on by the stress of the situation of what he's going through maybe feeling guilty regardless we don't know what it is i can't say kind of the situation but you know you can put one and one together and kind of make the assumption that it was something to do with the allegations and for some odd reason i'm not too sure why but maybe the plague raves and the whole business techno thing shouldn't be a surprise but there is a particular segment of our community that thought it might be beneficial or good at the time to sort of come out and defend 
I'm not defend his honor. Let me not say defend his honor, but essentially honor his death in some regard and say how good of a guy he was. And um, they remember him from only the good stuff they kind of went through. And it really made me question just um, the lack of reading a room, um, the lack of compassion, the lack of understanding some of these people some of these DJs having a scene, especially some of the people that are kind of operate on the higher echelons of the totem pole. And it's really disheartening. I have to say that, especially even someone for myself who I wouldn't necessarily categorize as someone that would get kind of bummed reading kind of people's responses online. I don't really care for the most part. I'll just keep it moving. But seeing some of the people's responses and seeing how they're sort of defending their position and seeing some of the fans online sort of defending artists who they've never met people who aren't you know going to put money in their pocket who are not going to you know remember their birthday who don't give a scooby-doo if you unfollow or follow them right defending them as if they're like their their you know blood relatives is odd odd to say the least um a bit sycophantic right maybe i hadn't hadn't maybe it's my fault because i wasn't necessarily exposed to um that fan base of business techno people right because it's not something i de- i listen to from day to day but it's just really really disheartening regardless anyway um so i guess um business techno here made a entire thread i'm going to loot actually it's got all the reactions to it but let's kind of go through it kind of step by step and then we can kind of give my impression on what the actual situation is so of course the story kind of leaked no sorry a story here number one um says basically he was accused this is an accusation article here from local 10 okay if you're on screen dj Murillo accused of sexual battery at miami beach home it says the following at Murillo, an international superstar dj has been arrested and charged with sexual battery on a woman police say it happened at his miami beach home back in december detectives say Murillo, 49 and his accuser were both working as djs at a private party on the star island later and later went to Murillo's home in la Gork, um a drive for drinks along with another woman according to the arrest report the witness so the victim told detectives that Murillo made several advances towards towards uh, some sexual nature but she refused all of his attempts she told police she was intoxicated and later found a room inside the home to sleep by herself right cool then the things get dark she reported waking up nude um on the bed with marilla standing on the side of the bed also nude Jesus Christ. Miller denied the accusations. On Wednesday, the results of the rape kit came back and tested positive from Miller's DNA. The police report says Miller turned himself in with his attorney. So again, pretty disgusting first off, isn't it? Yeah. Like you're going, you know, you're a high flying DJ playing at a private party alongside another DJ who's also in a scene, which I think is complete sacrilege. I've always said from the very beginning that we should the scene should be a little bit more protective of each other. Like we should kind of like, you know, if you're going out and you see somebody getting sloppy drunk and um, they are falling over themselves, they're dropping their stuff. You should kind of go out your way to get them a glass of water, make sure they're okay. Try and get them connected, reconnected with their friends, maybe get them assistance through a security guard, maybe just help them out to maybe get a cab, whatever it may be. But I think it's our responsibility being in those sort of scenes to make sure that person's fine. Because the last thing you want is for, a situation to arise where you kind of turn the other cheek and be like you know what someone else will deal with it and then it transpires that that person fell down broken arm or had an overdose whatever it is right that's a bit extreme but regardless you have to kind of protect the people that are in your space i think i think club culture should be which even though i don't believe in it for the out for the real world i do think club culture can be its own little utopia it can be a little safe space a little safe haven that we create for each other right that we sort of kind of protect at all costs from any kind of um uh, uh, bad characters right that should be what it should be about regardless of what level you are underground warehouse party or glitzy miami night place right it should be a place where everybody in that vicinity should feel safe liberated and free if you look back at some of the old parties back in the day with mancuso and kind of how you know i'm um, stringent they were with entry policies or just the way they were, they were done in one location one guy sitting on the turntable spinning records part of the reason why those things are successful is because it provided a great platform people to come just express themselves especially if you read some of the earlier accounts of studio 54 not when it went to shit right and you know the velvet rope essentially kind of killed them but towards the especially in the beginning when you know it was the kind of it place to be part of the reason why it was because it was the place where celebrities could be anonymous and just kind of be themselves right you kind of have that with some of the clubs in the world now with 
Berger and being a standard example where it's they've created a safe space where people can actually go out and enjoy themselves without the fear of being papped or being noticed or you know being preyed upon whatever it may be right you just go out and enjoy yourself you know under the pitch blackness and throbbing sounds of techno so when i see stuff like this it really annoys me especially when it's done from industry with some within people that are in the scene to other professionals working because you know how hard it is especially if you're a female dj right i rail on some of them i think the immediate lenses and all those kind of people can be a little bit detrimental to the other success of the female djs in general right just in terms of how she carries herself you know the hypocrisy that she has and all that malarkey the fact that i don't necessarily think she's that good at what she does but that aside you still have to respect like um how hard it is to get into that industry as a dj right especially it being nightlife right you think about the perils and the obstacles you have to kind of maneuver in the nightlife industry as a person let alone a woman so when women are in the scene i think you do really owe it yourself and to them to go about it to go above to go above and beyond to kind of make sure they're safe as a guy i would say in my opinion you have to always do that so to see somebody doing it to a fellow dj a fellow peer is just heinous to say the least then i guess the story evolved when it was announced that he was found dead in his miami home and this is a story here from um tmz it says the following um, Eric Miller, I like to move it. DJ dead at 49. It says here, um, best known for his 993 hit, I like to move it, has died. TMZ has learned. Law enforcement, law enforcement sources tell us that DJ music producer's body was found this morning in Miami Beach. The circumstances around his death are currently unclear. Best known for his work in house music, Marilla produced his big hit in the 90s with electro dance track, I like to move it, which he put out under the stage name Real to Real. He's a three time winner of the DJ Awards Best House DJ and three time winner of the Best International DJ, including his most recent win in 2009 um Murillo's death comes a few weeks after he was arrested in miami for sexual battery charges the alleged victim claims she and Murillo went to his place after the djing she alleges she she uh she resisted his sexual advances and then went to sleep in a private place but woke up nude with Murillo standing next to her also nude him told himself in uh, august 6 he Murillo was 49 years old and i guess the update here is this that the so far miami beach told tmz that there's no apparent signs of foul play uh and Murillo's cause death will be the determined by a medical examiner so more than likely than not is you know it's definitely going to be an overdose or you know um yeah or something along those kind of lines right and then i guess you know for the for the victim it's obviously heartbreaking that you can't get justice um there's always going to be a sort of a uh, kind of asterisk against the allegations even though you know for the most part looking at the actual bare facts of the matter um you go back to, with two people to your home um, one dude only it seems like and two girls um, you're both obviously intoxicated and maybe high you try to make advances to the victim they rebuff them and say no she probably feels too inebriated to go home on her own at that time at night finds a room to go stay on her own because she feels probably occupied with the other female who probably ended up i don't know what ended up happening over there and then suddenly you wake up next to them and they're naked and then you know luckily the, the woman um decided to go straight away and get a rape kit done because i think in some instances women don't end up doing that because you know they, they get uncomfortable or yeah it's just not the best it's not the most um it's not the most uh easiest process to go through if you've seen um what actually goes what actually happens during rape kit procedures to get rape kit done he denies allegations the dna comes back obviously that you know it, it gets proved that you know his dna obviously is in that rape kit he hands himself in which is obviously another indication of guilt in that regard and then he gets released on bail pending you know i'm assuming a court date so for the first for the most part especially if you not even adding into the fact that you know there's stories even for myself just somebody that's completely detached from it and not in the miami scene whatsoever just on forums and stuff whatever there's always been word eric murillo has been a bit of a creep he's been somebody that kind of you know is maybe a little bit too handsy a little bit too aggressive when it comes to um approaching women in a club especially when he's had a couple of drinks and i think he's had a you know he's gone through bouts of alcohol abuse i'm pretty sure he went to rehab maybe in 2017 i remember hearing stories about that again this is all any what i remember hearing so take another things into account it's not hard to believe that most probably this situation actually happened the way the victim is remember um, has kind of alleged so in my opinion i would think even if i was his friend and he passed away it probably isn't the best time to put up 
a glowing tribute of this guy and say how much he meant to you and all this stuff because it's very raw especially for victims of sexual abuse right to reread the story it's probably really triggering it probably kind of conjures up all kinds of emotions and to see people in your own scene a scene that you're already kind of skeptical about especially with the whole playgrave stuff right you've seen people's morals you've seen people's true colors come out you've seen djs who have kind of you know really operate on the high totem pole of dj food chain um justifying why it makes sense for them to fly you know all across the halfway across the road to go play a gig and then somehow kind of say some sort of altruistic reason when really it's just to line their pockets right when people the people actually do need to go play the gigs aren't getting any gigs whatsoever so you're seeing all this stuff happening and then you're seeing these same people going out and sort of lauding and honoring this alleged you know probably what 90 percent sure he's definitely a rapist right on their feed and then they have no idea why it could be triggering they have no sensitivity they have no tact no ability to read a room just really kind of sloppily done and um fortunately business techno sort of uploaded an entire thread talking about the issue here i think there's a video of the original story but basically uploading a lot of the kind of tributes from people that paid in his respects right and again i just my question is as a guy or as a dude or just as a person when is it like again i think there's probably marco corolla guys probably um tweet is maybe the best of evidence of it in terms of kind of a neutral just you know one message kind of leave it at that but if you had a friend right that was convicted of or that was a lit like what is it what would require you to not to be a friend of somebody what would what would kind of be the thing and for me i was thinking about it today and i think the thing that would actually make me immediately delete someone's number and not be their friend anymore and just kind of leave it you know would be something to do with money right i don't know you lend the money they run off of it and they just don't answer your call or something like that that's just like you know you're dead to me and then maybe something to do with kids right involving something heinous or untoward with children like even just the allegation alone would probably make me you know never talk to you again and i think that's about it right i think so having thought about it properly i think that's about it even stuff like murder or you know kind of really you know a great like gbh grievous body harm and stuff i'd have to kind of get the context of the story because it's easy like oh, sorry so stuff to do with kids um rape of course like you're completely done d dead to me and anything to do with money when it comes to murder and anything come to with violence i'd have to kind of find out what the story is especially for my friend because i know how quickly things can escalate especially between two guys especially when emotions are raw um you know i don't i don't know what the issue is i'd love to kind of actually have the context to it and then i can kind of weigh my way up both sides of the story and then make decisions that way but if I, one of my friends is accused of rape one of my friends is accused of touching up kids one of my friends is accused is kind of you know responsible for ripping off people being a basically uh being a scam artist being a fraud being a thief you're completely dead to me right i can't trust any of those people so i don't see why that's so difficult to understand so if you have somebody in a scene who for the most part is well known in that industry that scene the scene is small to be a little bit of a ladies man right to be a bit handy to be a great aggressive he's got allegations you know coming out the woodwork i'm assuming especially in the next few weeks you're probably going to see a lot of people kind of coming out with their own stories i think it depends really maybe they might think you know repercussions of the scene they don't want to speak out but it's well known that he might be a bit of a creeper to be kind of outwardly confident of just i don't know not confident but just you know so unaware of that and not reading the room properly and maybe how this might go down with victims of sexual assault is very bizarre very very odd and i don't really know why that is maybe it's just the fact that they just these people have always been like this and we're kind of seeing their true colors now because we're <clears throat> all under lockdown and essentially people are not playing behind a deck anymore so they're having to kind of show more of their personality and you're kind of seeing the stuff about them that you don't like that you've never seen because you know they've always posted pictures of them and god posed behind the decks and you know surrounded by beautiful women sipping champagne playing in all the best places and you don't really see how they would kind of carry themselves in these situations or where they stand morally or or kind of their worldview or whatever it may be and now you're seeing it i don't know if that's the case but again maybe the marco corolla example isn't the best one because i think that's probably the best way to kind of go about honoring somebody that's been accused of such a heinous crime but some of the other um you know jason's like this one by yusuf can't believe it only spoke to him last week he was troubled less than perfect but but always amazing to me that is such a ridiculous statement this guy's been accused of rape and more like more of more more likely than not did do it he has stories and allegations 
from in the scene you know from back in the day even right to somehow say it was troubled troubled is like having a coke addiction right uh taking too much kit right being on too many drinking too much before a gig that's troubled um that's being less than perfect turning up late to a gig um being a hassle to the staff cool that's the trouble that's annoying but trouble isn't raping people trouble isn't being untoward in sexual advances trouble isn't um constructing things so that everyone always ends up back at yours because that's what i've heard too he's always kind of whenever he's playing in miami somehow he always kind of works out that you know he invites back a certain group of people back to his home and you see that clip of him speaking with pete tong at um ims where essentially giggling about him being a ladies man and being too obsessed and you know with women and some people if his friends you'd be like oh he's too sex addict no he wasn't just a creep simple as that mate um to me and helped us get circus going in the early days and we had many amazing times over 20 years and the thing is why i think in my opinion for the most part especially in scenes you know how people are you know what they say you know what they do you know what they're about so for people to kind of pretend like they didn't know this side of eric murillo is really disingenuous it says here wow completely shocked by the news of eric murillo's death it's hard to believe it almost so sad to lose a legend you have left the world with many memories of happiness and love brother like what enjoy being back home we all dance with you that is insane like happiness happiness really um dub fire says eric is gone i'm deeply saddened and also very conflicted about what to say at this time normal response but no matter the choice of words some of you will have a strong opinion in a way which memorizes life now Derek, i knew was a jubilant talented and a pioneer in dance music i'm honestly lost for words i will hold on to the memories i had of him the music he had his dj sets the energy and how he championed inspired the room all this stuff is just nonsense who gives a shit about all this stuff that you know about him personally dubfire again absolute weapon it makes no sense why do you why does this stuff matter just end it at the first paragraph or just the first sentence that's all you that, all that needs to be said right now you can honor someone's death in quite that's a you know what i realized with this stuff as well which is funny the insistence on posting about everything on social media especially with this business techno lot right they're obsessed with posting about their gigs and where they're playing and where they're going has essentially got them more in trouble right because they're posting about playing in places where they probably shouldn't be during the, during a pandemic then they're getting group ripped about ripped to pieces about it on social getting annoyed but then they're not taking out the videos because they want people to know that they're playing right so they can get more gigs and this essentially led to this right where an actual friend of yours has passed away you're conflicted, which you should be, because he's an he's alleged to be a rapist and probably is more likely than not a bank to write rapist, considering everything that's gone on. And then because you you can't t detach yourself from your phone, your social media feed, you want to prove to everybody that you are friends, so you're willing to go into your archive, upload the picture of you guys back in the day, laughing, smiling, joking, so everyone knows that you were actually his friend and uploading it for clout. This is essentially what it is. It's a clout RIP post. It's not even sincere. It's not like they're not even being sincere to his memory. It's just more so for them to kind of flex and to show us that, hey, I was his friend. I liked him. He liked me too. Look at us playing at Amnesia. Look at us playing at DC 10. And then in the process, you're, um, you're triggering victims of sexual assault. And you're also saying to people that were assaulted by him in the past that, hey, your story doesn't matter my story of him being a, a legend on the boat parties and after parties is more important than your story um of assault and the darkness that you've kind of kind of been subjected to um you know all these years it's ridiculous and it continues more so more here martinez brothers um in utter disbelief at this news of our brother's all timely basket and again do you honestly think these guys had no idea about what Emerilla was getting up to i knew about his allegations i knew he was a bit of a mess I knew about this stuff and I'm a nobody. So what, what what more can you say about these people? Eric will never forget how much you've influenced us as a DJ and how much we looked at you when we were coming up. We'll never forget getting that call from Rob telling us you weren't as open. And again, this is all stuff that can be said months or weeks later when stuff is settled and, you know, it's not so raw. Is this the time to be doing this? Really? Is this the time to be eulogizing your friend who, again, this is what I'm saying. These people have no moral compass. Like when, when will a friend stop being a friend? And again, this is the thing as well as a issue. So because he's got cloud, because he's well known in the industry, he can do whatever he wants. There's nothing you can do that's ever going to make you not be his friend. So you can rip somebody. He can kill somebody. He can touch touch up kids or whatever it may be and you'd still kind of excuse it it's insane it's insane um we'll never forget or when you came out to cleo for our first shows there and just stood next to us and watched us jam for hours while you whistled and cheered us on we could literally go on and on it's easy to focus on the mistakes or something mistakes 
So I guess if you're his friend, what do you think? Do you honestly believe that he didn't do it and that the rape kit that came back positive with his DNA was what? What was that? Just like an ex just a, 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 I guess in, in their defense, they could say, hey, rape kits don't prove rape. They just prove evidence of a sexual intercourse, right? Um, I guess in some respects, some rape kits can prove can maybe substantiate the claims of rape if they can find bruising, whatever it may be. But most of the time, it's just a way for them to kind of gather the evidence and say, hey, your DNA was found in this person. They're saying it's not consensual. We're going to now investigate because we've got a case to open up, right? If they don't find any DNA, it's literally impossible for them to kind of proceed, which is probably the whole reason um, women are so apprehensive of doing rape kits in the first place, right? Because they sometimes can be inconclusive in that regard. But God almighty, mistakes um anyway it's due to focus on somebody but we chose to big up you as the legend that you are and again what do you think if you're a woman reading this and you're a fan of the martinez brothers and they're saying that what um um he allegedly done was a mistake what do you think of that well, how does that make you feel weird way to go about things and we hope that you're in a peace now and that you'll find your path we love you brother wish we would have to hold told you that more often jesus christ these guys are like insane again I'm, I'm a big fan of martinez brothers well it's hard if it eats everything did it as well so guided about eric one of my dj heroes and over the past years always chatting bollocks on whatsapp and sending stupid voice notes and that malarkey he was clearly a troubled so a troubled soul again addicted to coke addicted to cat drinking problem right maybe some domestic abuse stuff right right maybe maybe even that but even that you're a bit of a scumbag like anything that's self-destructive, cool, troubled. But anything that impacts anybody else, scumbag. That's not troubled. Always chatting both on Skype. He was clearly a troubled soul. And I'm not one for second accusing, um, excusing the things that he has done. But to me, he was always an absolute gent. and absurd. Of course to you, because you're a guy. You're a big guy too. A pretty rotund you know close to morbidly obese guy and of course he would of course he'd be nice to you that makes no sense he's everything r.i.p mate like god almighty this guy's a wallad it's just insane jamie jones this picture was taken in march again so i told you about the clout it's less about again this is the thing it's not even about eric muller it's more so about himself I gave myself a pat on the back for being a friend of a dj that you guys all want to know but i knew him since last march when we always used to dj like come on Jamie Jones, oh God, I get these it's people that actually don't mind too. It's like God Almighty, these people. They make it so hard to like them. His picture was taken in March, just as the world was turning mad and travel was being cancelled. Yeah, but you guys are still playing, innit? Eric opened his home to us and let us stay there for many weeks. Um, classic move, but I guess you're a guy, so nothing's gonna happen to you. He said he always um the best host. Of course, Eric was not perfect, and I can't judge anyone of the things I know very little about. Of course, you know very little. This is the it's a weird justification for this sort of post, isn't it? Because I don't know nothing about that sort of stuff. I'm going to honor his life, right? But have you not heard of um, BTK? Do you not know of these infamous serial killers who they find out later on are these kind of like, you know, well-mannered family men that they had no idea that would do such a thing? That is possible, right? That is possible for you to like as a functioning psychopath to hide the dark parts of yourself from the people that you hold nearest and dear of and inflict the pain on others that know nothing about you it is possible to do that that is possible so to suggest that somehow because you didn't see it that means he's a good guy is really demonstrably false and it's a really it's a bad bad example bad example the things that i do know certainly for that is eric miller was a kind-hearted and humble man who was forever welcoming and generous um he inspired me over the years and nobody can deny that he was left a musical legacy that will last his way beyond his lifetime no he won't if you've been like I, it's safe to assume like if people are if people are saying right and again mark jason was never mark jason was never proved guilty right he was never found guilty in a court of law um some of the accounts from some of these parents you know they can be picked apart and all these things right but people are willing to cancel michael jackson based off allegations right and you know, these allegations haven't been substantiated in any kind of way, shape or form, or, you know, depending on what you believe. So what 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 could be said for somebody that's been accused of a, accused of rape, denied it, rape kit proved that, you know, a sexual intercourse, intercourse happened between these said two same people. So that did happen. And then the person hands himself into the police. Is that not rape? Is that not being found guilty for the most part? Is that not enough for you to like delete their entire library just say so they don't count anymore? Insane. Insane. And then I guess the last one, what's this one? Oh, 
to, who, who's that one? Jamie Jones. And then what's that? Pete Tong. Eric or uh, Pete Tong's a weapon anyway. What, what do we know about that? Pete Tong would always would always be our song. Um, time marches on and never ending. Time keeps its own time. Here we stand at the beginning and then time passing us by. And I can dream for all us. I hope you're in a better state. Eric, thank you for being my friend. Thanks for the incredible passion of house music. You took the art to another level. You are a master. You had your demons. And you had brave enough. You had your demons. I'll always, I'll always be grateful. I leave. You leave an incredible legacy. You have millions of people smile and sing, and that's a blessing and a gift from all the people at Mirror Dance Floor. So, how are these people going to feel when all the allegations? There's not even about, this is not even a, it's a false equivalency, but like, where's the decency in this? Like, that's the that's the kind of horrible thing about it. Is where's the decency? Like, really, where's the decency? I guess they just don't believe the allegations and they honestly do think it was a consensual sexual encounter that the woman is purposely trying to disparage or kind of smear Eric Miller's name. But honestly, this isn't like Saint. This isn't like Ben UFO being accused of something like this, right? Who's maybe some people can be like, oh my God, he, that's not definitely how he is. He's a pretty decent guy. He's a gent, right? This is not this. This is somebody that is well known in the industry, well known in the scene to be a bit of a slime ball anyway. So I don't know why these guys are dancing and tripping over themselves to defend somebody like this anyway. It's not even, I get, again, I just guess it's a clout thing because he's been around the scene for so long. He's got a legacy. He's got an influence. Um, obviously, you know, his past work has probably way outstripped the stuff he does now because, you know, um, anybody that's seen some of his recent streams online, you'd know that, you know, he's probably not the DJ he once was back in the day. The scene kind of moved on somewhat from him. But regardless, I guess people just want to be adjacent to him just because of the name and they're willing to kind of bury their moral compass and sort of kind of um suspend belief just so that they can put out a post about them being friends back in the day <coughs> pretty disgusting <clears throat> and then you've got another one here from simon dunmore it's not easy posting about a passing of one of your contemporaries especially when it's someone you know, closely worked with and were inspired by he was charming driven and ambitious which led to us working together on raw um, I remember meeting him again in Landmark Hotel in London where he showed me the logo design for a label he was about to launch. Submarino became the template for it. Okay, this is just stupid. He's just lauding him again. Well, you got DJ Sharma here. you got Sven Var, which is awful to see. Again, one of my heroes in DJing. I'm shocked by Eric's surpassing their surprising death. Eric was a great pioneer. He has been the scene. I can really say that he produced the music with DJ for passion, excited people to DJ. I've had a lot of good parties with him, and I can say that he was really friendly and very humorous guy. In the past few years, he had changed somewhat and somehow moved away from the light like this hippy dippy fucking mushroom lsd-ish nonsense is just insane moved away from the light yeah you can say that mate raping people when they're half asleep that isn't move. that isn't like <sighs> these guys are insane man insane i'm sure that now he will see the light again i would like to express my condolences to his family and relatives with you mind no mention of the victims either right victims family members um are because Let's put this thing to rest, right? He's ruined his own legacy. He's the one that ruined his own legacy. He's the one that kind of has put his friends in a position where they're having to defend his honor online because he put him, he kind of took advantage of somebody. Like he's he did that to himself. So to come out with these posts at this, especially when everything is so raw, it's just weird. Maybe it's just people's way of, way of grieving, but I would assume if you were actually his friend, you'd grieve in private. You'd reach out to the family, his close friends. You do what you can do to make the process of um, burying him, whatever it may be, as painless as it can. But you wouldn't be posting about it on social media, especially with the allegations that are, that are kind of out there. Especially if you believe that you know more victims may come out later on. You don't want to look dumb. You don't want to look idiotic. You don't want to look tone deaf. This is what it is. It's just all tone deaf, especially from people that should know better. All these people that are in the scene like it's impossible that they didn't know it's like the harvey weinstein thing right reading some of the accounts it's not the fact that harvey weinstein was a monster that's bad enough the bad thing is that the entire industry turned a blind eye right rose mcgowan's been screaming out allegations about rare people in the industry from years ago and she was labeled the crazy person told that she's difficult hard to work with ostracized from the scene that's the hard bit it's we know monsters exist harvey weinstein's they're always going to exist in the world unfortunately right we can't even eradicate these people right they do exist they're, they're amongst us but you would hope that your friends your family members not family your friends your colleagues people in the scene would warn you about someone and say hey stay away from him stay away from her these are bad people 
right? So that we could all be aware of it and maneuver around it. But they don't. Even some of the, look at some of the counsel, Jeffrey Epstein, right? Like he hired, he kind of tried to, especially one of the women in the documentary on Netflix, heartbreaking. One of the women he, he tried to sexually assault, refused these advances, but then he hired her to get other girls that he could assault. And she willingly participated in that. Now you can get into say it's grooming, whatever it may be, but that's the most heinous part of it. Not the fact that he's a monster, because we know Jeffrey Epstein is a monster, but it's the fact that the people that could prevent further abuse who've been subjected to their own kind of abuse didn't speak up for the people, didn't stand up for them. And this is the problem here we have here. Eric Mueller was a monster. Eric Mueller, more likely than not, has other victims. That isn't the case. The issue is that the people that were nearest and closest to him, the ones that are his friends that are posting tributes about him, made no effort to pull him up on it, made no effort to um, get him to change his ways, made no effort to get him to be a better person. None whatsoever. Zero from what we see. Zero. Because they're all kind of trying to feign ignorance. He was a great guy to me. He helped me out with my tune. He whistled and cheered when I was playing in my DJ booth. <sighs> Dennis Ferreira here too, posting another fun image of him. Jesus Christ, only God can judge us. Until then, we ask for peace for Eric and the young woman in question. People need to stop counterculture stuff when everybody dies, it's sad. Of course, when anybody dies, it's sad. But this is somebody dying with an allegation of rape under their name. Not somebody dying with, you know, I don't know some pyramid scheme embezzlement whatever right that hits someone's pocket but doesn't you know even then that's something you know reprehensible in that this is just insane the equivalencies that these guys are racking up of course carl cox who's a complete muppet right he's obviously there with his rip post nick F um, falcone of course all the business techno donuts that you'd expect are all on there posting their god pictures and images of him in the dj booth and then I guess the last one I want to kind of mention, which I thought kind of really spoke about it in a really great way, was a post here by Mr. C that I'm going to get that really kind of touched upon some of the things I spoke about and really kind of put a lot of it in context that I kind of really wouldn't be able to do justice. So let me get it up on here. But, 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 and the, oh, it's disappointing to see this, right? Obviously, Jamie Jones and then seeing. Jack Massa, who I've defended on this channel before from his allegations and somebody who I have a lot of respect for. But if ever there was a person that shouldn't be getting involved and shouldn't be lending their voice or anything to do with these sort of events, it should be someone like a Jack Master, right? People, some people out there still think, you know, even though the people involved in the situation with Jack Master have forgiven him, he's obviously so seeked forgiveness he's gone and done the work he went to therapy he's supposed to be sober at the moment he's done the necessary things to kind of get himself accepted back into society but the last thing you need is for you to your name to be any kind of way linked to the situation with Eric Miller and to post beautiful words Jay after Jamie Jones made that cringe of his statement about him you know being a good person in March and he had these demons and he had these issues and mistakes you can't be co-signing this Jack Master man you gotta read the room you gotta read the room and just step away this isn't the time for you to get involved man it really isn't brother it really isn't um so this is the post here that I wanted to end on from Mr. C can I get it up on here um oh Ida Ida Enberg thankfully somebody with some common sense spoke up about it as well um so i guess dj rebecca posted about something here too finally someone normal oh so obviously that she she posted the comment regarding jamie jo sorry jack master and then she posted this statement here saying to all women in the industry and those around in that um in have had to deal with sexism rape and sexual assault um me too and the next question, so I'm feeling very vulnerable and emotional person. This is I've been questioning what my outrage has been um, over the passing of Eric Mueller and how the fact that his alleged rape and court case has not been mentioned once in my fellow colleagues share their thoughts. Exactly. No mention of it whatsoever. The same mistakes had his demons moved away from the light like wankers has not been mentioned by any of my colleagues share their thoughts on his passing, painting a picture of a humble guy who was far from perfect, etc, etc. All this has done is brought up feelings of my past and shit that I have dealt with and the fact that even if I had tried to talk about it 
um, what happened, my perpetrators would still have been excused and somehow would actually be my fault. This is not me to taking, talking bad about the deceased, but really the need to reach out to the women who may have been, who may have had a similar experience to share that I know how this feels, but I don't know how to change things within the industry as it now seems we still have a long way to go, but maybe together we are stronger. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe it's just some, a, some, a segment of the industry, this big no tech, this business technology, scene is just toxic and um beyond reproach there's no way of kind of rescuing it it is what it is and i think if you're a woman in this scene you just have to understand what the landscape is understand the climate understand the operators understand how they kind of function and move accordingly this is it no one's going to help you in this scene it seems like and if they're trying to make it if they're trying to make their way up the scene trying to get near to people they're going to excuse anything under the sun even rape they're going to excuse if you see the statements and again this isn't talking bad on the deceased this is more so the fact of somebody's been accused of something pretty heinous and from all intents purposes it seems like they most probably right of all probability out there we're 99 sure this guy probably did what he's been accused of so to remember him or to post up eulogies and you know um statements about him being a decent person and making mistakes without any mention of the scores of victims that he might have in his wake in his passing is beyond disgusting but again i just think it is what it is it's a scene isn't it we, we, we can't change this this is just the way that business techno scene is and i guess this is maybe a good thing in terms of seeing it out in the open um dj high posted about it somebody that's outside of the business techno scene she says tributes pouring out for Marilla by many in our industry calling him a legend before calling him a rapist goes to show how far we are away from reaching any kind of equality i hope none of you have daughters which is true it's not even an equality thing it's just a decency thing it's just a um it's just a looking after each other thing that's the thing that's really concerning here it's not a scene it's not a community it's just those people are the stars and everyone else is the, the customers who basically supplement and pay for their lifestyle you're paying for their private jets you're paying for their bougie rest, boozy mills and noble whatever it may be you're paying for their gucci and burberry addiction whatever it may be that's what you're paying for you're paying for their drugs but they're not contributing anything to the actual overall ecosystem of the scene they're just up there collecting the checks extorting promoters taking the piss out of punters that's essentially what they're doing that's the issue that we have at the moment with that con that con with that community in the scene anyway with that segment of the scene she continues here said suicide is a horrible thing many of our lives um, have been impacted by it however when we glorify someone's life in this way and ignore the sexual violence you are sending a message to the female followers that they are worth less than someone's popularity and a message for our male followers that there are no consequences if you are good enough for your job and that's the same thing i'm saying to you in the beginning i'm glad you said that it's not that these guys are even saying R.I.P. to Eric Murillo because they're trying to be sincere and they want to remember him as a friend. They're just doing it because he's got clout and they want to um, remind people that they were friends of this guy back in the 70s or sorry, back in the early 2000s. Uh, so it continues. Um, sexual assault in our industry is rife. Ask any of your female peers who are or either DJs, producers or those who work behind the scenes about their experiences. Also, a few of them have come forward. Exactly. For anyone to, like, if you've been in the scene, it's impossible for you to say that you haven't seen any untoward sexual advances or scenarios that could be deemed as assault. It's impossible to say that because unfortunately it's nightlife, right? It's not our scene, it's just nightlife in general. Nightlife is going to bring out the devil in people. Um, drugs, alcohol is going to lead to some very um, sketchy situations that can be very uncomfortable, especially for the women involved, right? But in most cases, you would imagine, especially in a niche industry like house, techno, underground, warehouse spaces, in dance music in general, that the smaller the scene is, the more responsible for each other that we would be, right? Looking after each other, making sure no one's a creep, making sure there's no dickheads, right? Make sure there's safe spaces. So for you to think that somehow in that scenario, underneath the ban of, of, of um, nightlife, with all, with all kind of the goodwill in the world, that there aren't going to be some bad characters doing some really shady stuff behind the scenes, especially the ones that have influence and power, the ones that have power, if they have influence, right? That have some kind of ability to make and break careers, to think that they won't take any advantage of that kind of thing is ridiculous. It happens all the time. You Again, as she said, just speak to anybody else in the scene speak to a dog girl speak to a barback and you hear the stories you hear will be like will blow your mind 
But again, that's not even the point. You don't need to speak to somebody to know that what Eric Miller did was bad and maybe eulogizing his um eulogizing about his memory on your social media feed isn't the best way to kind of honor him and also to respect the victims. Like that shouldn't be that hard to kind of fathom, really, innit? Um and then of course you've got the hip hypocrisy, king and queens. You got had one and Emily Lenz getting involved in it, calling Eric Romero bad, you know, considering the fact that, you know, depending on what you but what you kind of read out there, they might be responsible for, you know, upwards to hundreds of deaths based on the events that they were promoting and playing at in Paris during the possession techno events. But again, I digress. Ida Enberg made a pretty good statement here too. Um Ada Inberg happens that's Adam Bear's wife, isn't it? Which is interesting as well, considering he made some really stupid remark about it. But this is Ida Enberg. Um, some guy called Frank Hoover said to Jamie Jones, you shouldn't apologize for his post he did. And she replies and said, no, he replies, said, this is really his stupid reply. Um, you shouldn't apologize, Jamie. You are simply paying respects uh, to friends. Uh, death, that's all. House music like rock is known for its sex, drugs, and alcohol. Again, this guy doesn't represent men. This guy's a fucking wild. Like, he should, you know, like, we should be investigating him because this is an insane statement to make. Um, it's basically aligned and then both parties, men and women should both take responsibility for our actions. What are you talking about? Like, what an idiot. And luckily, Ida Emberg replied and said, sex, drugs, and alcohol still has nothing to do with rape. Never, ever, under any circumstances, is it justified to rape. It has nothing to do with Christianity or house music culture. I've been working in this industry for 20 years. Most artists and DJs have been super respectful and 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 into, in it for pure uh, passion of music. I met Eric for the first time in 2006. With all respect, I'd highly suggest you suggest you seriously think twice before you talk about things you really don't know anything about. They went back and forth. He says, I don't know why I'm asking. The man's a legend and I have no idea for all we know. It's his first offence. Oh my God. No one else has come forward to speak. Speak now or forever hold your breath. We can only heal by speaking up. What an idiot. She should have left, but what if she got drugged? She left to get sleep in another room after feeling intoxicated, right? He had no right to get in her bed, undress her and himself to have sex with her if she didn't want him to. No matter what, I don't understand how anyone could defend rape. It's sickening really. So it continues, says, now you have my point of view. I can't help but wonder if you have called me a wannabe DJ too. If I had not left and if you had want me to come back then, we should never judge a woman based upon who they are. But truly listen to their stories. It's easier to abuse somebody in a lower position. Please remember that. God almighty, some of this stuff. And then just to finish here, I just, uh, Mrs. C posted a really good statement talking about some of his experiences with um, sexual assault and kind of how triggering it was to read the stories about Eric Muller. He says, today was a child day for Eric Muller, but of course he won't be there. My heart goes out to the victim who will not be able to receive any justice or for being raped. As an elder in our community, I feel it's my role more responsibility to make this post to seek protection for women in our scene. I was sexually abused by a man on almost a daily basis for three years for ten to for age of ten to thirteen. Jesus Christ. These repeated sexual assaults were against my will. I was grimmed and trapped in an ongoing situation. I was just a child. I was threatened by my abuser that if I didn't do as deemed, he would tell my mum and friends I was gay. It was the late seventies when being gay gay was a huge taboo it was i was scared the living daylights out of me i had to remain silent as i was scared of others would make it is from this perspective of being a sexual assault survivor that i'm commenting about marilla's cases this as that is the only perspective i truly know did i know marilla yes for many years were we mates yes like the rest of the international dj mates did we have fun together of course did i post a photo of so of us together saying r.i.p and how much i respect him and feel for his loss not a fucking chance in hell for me this cause this case is about the victims of this man during the me too campaign i heard that marilla had raped in ibiza god almighty see what i mean um no women step forward um with uh charges it was no one it was no one i know so for me i had to treat it like rumors i already felt myself distancing from this man though as it's rarely smoke without fire which again i then heard rumors about rape in new york again no woman pressed charges and i didn't know who these women were so again i have to treat these allegations as just rumors um, one month ago, the story broke about Murillo during um, being charged with rape. After reading that story, I hoped he'd sent, he sent to jail to protect our community. His victim went to his home with a friend of hers, a witness, drunk, and the victim is still able to refuse the sexual advances and suggestions. However, being the victim was also a, a DJ. They just played together, and she's also a longtime girlfriend of another huge international DJ who makes with Murillo, which again, it makes the story even more sickening. She felt safe enough to crash at his place. She woke up naked and Marilla was also naked. Marilla denied anything happened, but this victim didn't feel right, so she had a rape kit test done the very day. 
I must say the results came back positive from Miller's DNA after he denied it. If it happened, he then handed himself in. This is what I call bang to rights or caught with your hand in a cookie jar. Any ounce of doubt or respect I had from Miller threw out the window, which it should be. If you're a friend, that should be bang to rights, right? You would imagine so, but not to international DJ scenes who want to get their clout off by posting pictures of their friends. Uh, three days ago, he says, I saw on the news that he was dead. Three days before his trial, his victim will not see victim to justice people are saying innocent to proven guilty but now that the verdict shall never come yet we all know as well as he did that he was going down for rape the last few days i've seen tons of djs posting posters photos on facebook and face on um, instagram laughing on Murillo, wishing him to rest in peace saying what a fun guy he was and generally making this rapist sound like a hero i totally understand their moment of respect their moment of sadness and lost friendship and sympathize however how does the victim feel seeing these photos um how do other victims of rape feel when all the other male DJs in our scene are standing up or praising a rapist would they stand up to do the same for Jeffrey Epstein or Jimmy Savile good point um, there really isn't much difference I've stepped away from social these days because it's triggered my own emotion as being a victim um, my honest concern is this where are the victims of sexual assault feeling um, seeing all these posts certainly not support our cause um, every single one of these threads have arguments in them some are saying we should have mentioned a rape child respect for his family I don't agree don't post uh, don't post the post there'll be no arguments or discussion on them it's Marilla's fault that his family and friends feel embarrassed exactly not his victims anyone else who's speaking out for the safety of our sisters and our scene imagine the psychological effect that these posts are having on all sexual assault victims imagine these victims or your girlfriend sister or someone dear to you what is the most important is women being and feeling safe in our clubs and our festivals like I said and what kind of messages are being sent out for all these abused women is um, of all these DJs making their heartfelt posts about the rapists when these women need and deserve protection and support i see it it's mostly mostly male djs doing the back slapping i wonder why the female djs haven't joined in so much these posts have upset me if that's what making posts please make yourself objectively how these posts uh, may be perceived by sexual assault and rape victims once the dust settles you want to delete your merlot loving fred as believe me it isn't a great look and you're all lovely people so maybe you'll want to do the right thing it's up to us as DJs to stand in unity and protect the women in our scene and make them feel safe, not vulnerable. 100% agree with that, man. And again, unfortunate circumstance for everybody involved, but there's no way you can go around honouring somebody's death who's been accused of what he's accused of, especially if you're actually his friend. You'd be embarrassed to even post a picture of him on your social media feed because you're aware of the allegations. But again, these people have no morals, have no ethics, have no way of reading a room, and they're just kind of going about life willy-nilly getting all the money they can collect in the scene and not caring about the community um, underneath them or around them in any way shape or form but anyway maybe i'm wrong in that regard let me know your thoughts do you think um the responses are owed to the top should be people be honoring um, eric miller's death regardless of what he done and not mentioning the allegations in respect for his family or do you think the victims are owed some respect by having the djs take down their post not post eulogizing comments of regardless about him and just kind of use it as a reflection point to kind of introspect and kind of dissect and investigate what the tox what's going on in our scene what the bad things are going on and try to eradicate them as best as we can because we can't be having this stuff go on man this can't be acceptable form of behavior it just can't in my opinion anyway that's it for the excellent show episode number 368 thanks so much for tuning in as per usual um if you want to support the show please make sure you click the link on patreon regarding the show here patreon.com for slash agostino who does one dollar you can get a full audio podcast as well as my entire library available on patreon if you're listening via the podcast app please download the show share it five share it give it a five star review if you're watching via youtube smash the like button hit subscribe leave me a comment down below and i'll see you guys again next time peace